You know, right. it's, it's 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 like it's biblical. I mean, we're, we're you know, even even in the word, it tells us how all of the nations will go against Israel and for Trump to move the the capital, the embassy to Jerusalem. Um, it's just it's just something that all of this is happening now. Mm-hmm. All of these different events are taking place now. They're, they're still trying to destroy Israel. Israel is still allies with the United States, the bird with eagle wings. Um, it's just it's just amazing to be alive to see all of this take place. We're we're it's almost we're living we're living through what, what, what we would think we would see on TV, you know, like a movie. But we're living it, we're seeing it, and it's amazing to see it all take place. You know, I I, I was really astounded. They took me to the um, the embassy site uh, before it was open. And it's it's kind of a nondescript building. Um, you know, the U.S. Embassy that was in Tel Aviv looked like a block long fortress out of concrete and steel. And yet, this is as if Donald Trump declared war on the world. Of all the countries in the world, all the countries will, every single country in the world that's a United Nations member sets their own capital and tells the rest of the world you, the rest of the world, if you want an embassy in our country, whatever that country is, you will put your embassy in our capital. There's only one country in the history of the world that it was denied that right, and that country was Israel. Hmm. Why? Because the Palestinians invented a narrative after 1967 declaring that they are the rightful heirs to Jerusalem and not the Jews. And the Jews have been there for 4,000 years, as anyone who can read the Bible knows all about. And the Arab um, presence in the city of Jerusalem is relatively new. It's never been the capital of anything, not an entity, not a state, not a country, not a people, ever, except the Jewish people. And yet, Israel was denied that right until Donald Trump stepped up and said, you know, enough's enough. There's a law in the books since the 1990s. I'm going to be the first president to adhere to the law. And what most people don't realize in the United States, Will, is that law has been on the books since Bill Clinton was president. Bill Clinton ignored it. George Bush ignored it. Barack Obama ignored it. And the first president to honor it was Donald Trump. Yeah. And yeah. And it scares them because Donald Trump does exactly what he says he's going to do. They're constantly trying to, they constantly say that he's lying. He lies about everything, but then they're afraid because he does everything that he says he's going to do. Right. It's, it's so backwards, you know, it's everything is just crazy backwards. So tell us a little bit about this video here. Um, what are we seeing? I can't uh, see what you've got playing. Which one are we looking at? You can't see it. So this is the one with you standing oh, in. Front. Oh yeah, no, no, I got it now. Thank you. Um, this is the town of Starot. Uh, it's in southern Israel. It's right across the street, basically, from the Gaza Strip. And what I'm showing the camera is every apartment building and house and business in Starot, including the playgrounds and the schools, must have its own bomb shelter. And the reason is and I'm standing in a bus station that is a legal bomb shelter, you have between five and nine seconds, sometimes 12 seconds from the time an alarm goes off to get undercover, and if you don't make it, you're dead. I mean, wow. literally long. Everybody there has PTSD of some form or another because the missiles are raining down on them. You know, I read something curious the other day. For those of your viewers that are World War II historical buffs, in World War II, Nazi Germany shot missiles into the population center uh, that was the home of Great Britain into London. And it terrorized the the citizens. I mean, thousands and thousands were killed and everybody had to live underground. It was a horrible time. They were sending the V2 rocket into London. Do you know what London and the allies did in response? They firebombed the city of Dresden. They destroyed it completely and killed every man, woman, and child in that city. And guess what? No more bombs hit London. What does Israel do? It gets on the phone 
and it calls up the owners or managers or residents of every building before they blow the buildings up. So nobody on the Gaza side is scared, Will. Nobody is terrorized. Nobody rises up against the government of Hamas, which is a terroristic, murderous thug regime, because they've got, they know nothing's going to happen. Yeah. And that's what has caused the big political upheaval in Israel the past few days. After 500 missiles hit Israel, Israel didn't strike back. They made a truce, I don't know, the 10th, 20th, 30th truce with Hamas, and said, okay, please stop firing missiles and we won't do anything back, even though we can destroy everything in Gaza in 45 minutes. Yeah. Did, and, any, did any of the rockets that they were shooting at Israel, uh, did they land or was the missile defense system able to take out all of them? You know, I, I, I've seen a, um, an Iron Dome uh, um, explanation from some of the engineers that worked on the project. Iron Dome, which is this revolutionary missile defense system, which is what you're referring to, cannot shoot down that many rockets. There's a computer system in each Iron Dome battery that as a rocket is launched within uh, a couple of seconds while it's still over enemy territory, figures out as best it's, it can instantaneously where it's going to land. And if it's not gonna land on a population center that's got people in it at that time, the Iron Dome doesn't fire a rocket at it. It only fires at rockets that look like they're gonna hit something. But even then, there's not enough Iron Dome batteries to knock down uh, hundreds of rockets. It can knock down dozens, not hundreds. Hmm. And that's why you see all over the news, Will, pictures of apartment buildings in Israel blown up and buses destroyed and schools with no roofs and people being rushed out by ambulances because the Iron Dome can't intercept that many. Yeah, you know, each, I heard some crazy number, and I, I don't want to be quoted on it, but it's something like each missile that the Iron Dome fires to knock down a rocket coming into Israel costs well over $10,000, and each missile launched out of Gaza that's made in a garage costs a few hundred because there's no guidance system. They just point them at civilization right. and it's an apartment building. Yeah, and whatever it, whatever it hits, hits it. I you know I saw a report years ago, uh, maybe it was two years ago, and the Palestinians were complaining to the UN because Israel would not share their Iron Dome technology. <laughs> and I'm sitting there thinking, why would they share that technology when... I mean, with the enemy. I mean, that doesn't make any sense to me. And well, do you, so you recall what I'm talking about. Oh, absolutely. You're 100% <laughs> right, man. And it's the craziest thing. And you know what? The UN sided with them about it. And, and the crazy thing is, Israel in its history, since 1948, has never fired a missile into a populated area, ever. They always target military targets. And you know, once in a while there's a mistake, but not 10,000 rockets later. Right. Hezbollah in, in Lebanon claims to have tens of thousands of rockets that have been imported from Iran with the money that your country and my country gave to Iran, and they spent the money with Hezbollah, their proxy army in Syria and in Lebanon with the intent express of destroying northern Israel in the next war. And those missiles that our Iranian manufacturer will are not going to be sent at military bases. Every one of them is targeted towards civilian population centers. It's intended to terrorize. And if Israel ever did what the British did, the war would be over in a day. They would wipe out every single building that fired a missile, whether it came out of a school, a hospital, um, a kindergarten, um, a rec center, the power plant, or whatever. But Israel doesn't fight that way. And even though they're trying so hard for good public relations, you end up with a day like today, Will, nine resolutions condemning Israel. None, none mentioned 500 rockets coming out of Gaza against population centers into Israel. Isn't that just pathetic? That's crazy. So no none of them, no resolutions against the Palestinians. 